Foamstars uses generative AI images for all of its in-game album artwork, specifically the image generator Midjourney. And it's not something hidden deep in a menu. Every time you open the game, you spawn into the rooftop lobby and you're facing the DJ station, exactly where you see all the AI images. You're even rewarded for playing the game with more of them. The game wants you to see these. Generative AI image models seal the work of artists without credit or compensation while simultaneously using a ridiculous amount of energy. The use of AI image generators is always unethical, and by no means should it ever be normalized in the games industry. This is more than enough reason to not play Foam Stars. However, I don't want to dive too deeply into the ethics of the game. Because I already did, in a video back in March, which everyone loved, and I don't want to repeat myself too much here. Instead, I want to focus on the rest of the game. Besides, why use AI images at all, when you could easily learn to create your own digital art using today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives, with thousands of classes led by industry experts across film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity, and more. Skillshare can help you take your career, skills, hobbies, passions, or side hustles to the next level. Any creative field you can think of, they probably have several classes on it. Photography? They got it. Web development? They got it. Marketing and business? They got it. But why are you asking about those categories specifically? No reason. Me personally, I've been wanting to step my thumbnail game up. Check out this class, YouTube Video Thumbnail Design in Canva by my man Cal Hyslop. Check out this whole learning path where Skillshare will curate a whole sequence of digital art classes for me so I can step my drawing game up. Check out this web design learning path where my dog learned how to build a WordPress e-commerce website where he's auctioning off my stuff. Wait, what? And you already know, I got the hookup for y'all. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. You can check it out for yourself. There's most definitely courses out there for you. So get started today with Skillshare. It's Monday, September 30th. Foam Stars goes free to play this Friday. Let's play some Foam Stars. I ain't played Foam Stars in a couple months. Let's see what's going on. Let's hop into it. A few moments later. All right, the uh, the game is loading. A few minutes later. Still loading. Three days later. Still loading. Three weeks later. This is like Baldur's Gate 3 load times, man. This is like Animal Crossing's New Horizons load times. Oh, it had to install the updates, of course. I'm not sure why it didn't do that already. Now it should work. Six and a half hours later. Okay, I still can't load into the game. One eternity later. Okay, I've been stuck on this rotating pig screen for 10 minutes. Okay, now nothing is working on the whole PlayStation. Fucking Sony and their stupid updates. Let's turn the PlayStation off and back on again. Let's try a connection test. Attempt to log in failed. What the hell? So it turns out that all of PlayStation Network was having an outage at the exact same time I went to go record. But why wouldn't the game load at all? I couldn't even play the single player part. I ended up playing Astrobot instead. Now that is a real ass game right there. All right, it's Wednesday, October 2nd. Foam Stars goes free to play play this Friday. Let's try to load into a ranked match. Yup. We, uh, we might be waiting here for a little bit, so we'll just leave that up top in the corner for now, and in the meantime, let's recap. Foam Stars launched on both PS4 and PS5 on February 6, 2024, but the preview demo on just PS5 was back in October 2023, so it's been close enough to a year. Now some of you may be wondering, wait, Foam Stars wasn't already free to play? And the answer is, sort of? If you had paid for any tier of a PS Plus subscription, which is a membership you need to play almost any PlayStation game online, it was included for the month of February on PSN. But if you waited until afterwards to download it, it was $30. There's very little publicly available info on the development, but according to their website, Foam Stars was co developed by Square Enix and Toy Logic. Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, Kingdom Hearts, these are Square Enix's heavy hitters, high quality, single player RPGs. Even smaller scope titles with smart gameplay and stupid names, these are more high quality, single player RPGs. And other games which Square Enix has published have been, um, you know, uh, you know they've, they've, uh, they've been uh, mixed. Toy Logic, who I think is more of a support studio, they made near replicant version bunch of numbers, which is another high quality single player RPG. Foam Stars is an online multiplayer soap shooter. 
the gameplay. When the game first came out in February, I remember having a pretty good time with it, but that was partially because I was really good and everyone else was not. I think I gradually stopped playing it in late March or early April, and am now returning to it in October. Now that I'm playing against the seven sweats who presumably never put the game down, both in the casual queue and the ranked queue, with the matches being a lot more even now, it's easier to tell the design problems. Smash the Star is Foam Stars' flagship mode. It's team deathmatch but with a twist. Your team gets a total of seven kills, sorry, chills, and then the best player on the other team is made their star player, and that player receives some buffs to their character strength. Your team gets one final kill chill on the star player, and that's how you win. This mode is a good idea on paper. I've been the star player a bunch because as you all know, I'm <laughs> pretty amazing at video games. There is some risk versus reward when you're the star player. Do you run away and stay alive, or do you go Rambo and try to rack up more kills with your enhanced power? The strategy I used when I was a star player was purposely baiting and drawing aggro of the other team away from their star player so the rest of my team could triple team them and secure the kill. However, in most of the matches I've played, the star player just runs away the whole time and the game becomes really boring. Even more boring is when both star players appear and they just stand on opposite corners of the map until time expires. Here are some things I like about Foam Stars. I really like the save mechanic, where you don't kill chill someone just by shooting them, you also have to crash into them with your surfboard to finish them off. But if a teammate crashes into them with their surfboard first, they can save them with a little bit of health. That's a cool final chance mechanic that incentivizes teamwork. I also legit really like the music in the game. There's various genres covered by the soundtrack, and it all fits the game pretty well, with most of the battle songs being very upbeat and jazzy. And Splatoon fans, eat your heart out, because Foam Stars actually has apartments. Sort of. You can customize your lobby with all sorts of fancy furniture. And I think that's the last nice thing I'm gonna say about Foam Stars for the rest of the video. The biggest problem with the gameplay is, when you're playing Foam Stars, you spend a lot of time not playing Foam Stars. And I'm not just talking about the load times that are still going. You spend a lot of time reloading your gun each match. It's not like Splatoon where you reload by swimming, thus making the gameplay feel more fluid. In Foam Stars, your gun runs out of ammo in like 3 seconds and you have to slowly walk around while reloading it. I even equipped an ability to max out the reload speed. This is as fast as it gets. You thought Splatoon was sensory overload the video game? Man, look at this bullshit. There's just shit all over the place. How am I supposed to tell what's going on? Neon foam at night is fun when you're on LSD at a foam party in person, but not so much in a video game where you're supposed to be in a competition and trying to use your eyeballs to see. It's hard to tell who is who and doing what, who's shooting you from when and where, from what direction you're taking damage from. You die in less than a second and you have no idea how or why and then some of the bubble attacks stun lock you or send you flying so it's easy to get comboed by other players. It's really easy to get spawn camped if you die in overtime when the Hunger Games death zone appears and then, and then you can't make it back to the middle before it kills you. Some of your gun bubble shots don't paint the floor in the area immediately around your feet, unlike how they do in Splatoon, so you have to keep looking down and spraying the floor before you can surf around in your color soap. I have to keep recalibrating the PS5 controller every two seconds seconds even though it's an $80 controller. If you tilt the controller down and back up, the calibration's off. Why are controllers so expensive? But the motion controls are butt ass. The game keeps freezing after the victory screen for a long time, like a really, really long time, like a weirdly long time. I have to keep typing more and more words into the script and talk slower and slower to cover how long it's taking, but it's just supposed to go to the next screen and it's still not going 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 and it's still not going. And it's still not going. Okay, there it goes. Finally! Happy Bath Survival is 2v2 in the pit and two players above playing support for each team. Then you rotate. This mode is pretty fun, since it's not as much sensory overload since it's only 2v2. Then there's Rubber Duck Party, which is similar to any push the payload mode, like Splatoon's tower control. The difference here is the tower is a big duck, and if your players can fully perform a dance on top of the tower, sorry, on top of the rubber ducky, then your team gets a huge surge in movement and points. 
points. A shortcoming of this mode is that when you die on offense, you respawn really, really far back at your spawn. And on some of the maps, there's no super jumping or warping or anything like that as far as I know, so it takes a really long time to surf all the way back to the action. But on other maps, they do have a cannon that can warp you back to the action. In fact, warp you past the action so you can flank. There's a brand new mode called Jackpot Scramble, I think. For obvious reasons, they consolidated the queues for each individual mode into one queue. I've tried to get into a match of the new mode they added, and I have not been able to play it, but I'm sure it's great. Hold it! So after my initial recording, I went back in and was able to get into a single match of Jackpot Scramble. And having had 4 seconds to read the directions and playing through one match, I'm still not entirely sure what the rules are. Um, there's a big floating piggy bank you follow around the map, and occasionally the bank stops and you um, shake the bank and pick up some coins and there's a slot machine on screen sometimes and then a victory bottle appears. I don't fucking know, man. I think it's kind of like a mix of clam blitz and a tower control. Foam Stars does a much better job than any Battlefield or Call of Duty game at depicting the sheer chaos of war in gameplay form. In Foam Stars, there's a lot of good ideas here. We know there's a lot of good ideas here, but ultimately the more I played, the more I realized I wasn't having fun. I played a couple casual matches and kept running into the same group of people, but you know, it was a good warm up. Matchmaking waiting times averaged from a minute and a half to three minutes, which really isn't that bad. It ain't good, but it's not that bad. Then I tried to find a ranked match. Again, waiting times weren't short, but weren't too egregiously long. The first two matches were against a lot of the same people. Then I went to the bathroom, came back, queued up, and we're gonna have to cut that timer here because I waited eight and a half half minutes for the next match and it was against a lot of the same people again. I'm pretty sure I had to wait for their previous match to end because they were the only people in the world playing ranked at that time. Hold on though, I took so long to make this video that I went back in on November 20th, 2024, about a month and a half after Foma Stars went free to play, and it only took me 12 seconds to find a match in a casual lobby. So at time of my second recording, Gabe's not dead. The updates. Each season was about 5 weeks apart, which creates a good consistent flow of new stuff. They added a new battle pass, a bunch of new maps, and they eventually lowered the cost of the in-game purchases after I complained about it. So you're, you're welcome. welcome. Within six months, the roster increased from 8 characters to 12 and they all played differently. As for the new characters, the thing that will bring you back into the game, the big additions that will keep you playing the game? Well the first new character they added was Quaff Guy, and I despise Quaff Guy. It is no understatement to say that I hate everything about this character. He makes me extremely uncomfortable, and my life is now demonstrably worse from having seen this monstrosity. They had these fry yay parts where you could try out the next character a season early. You just kind of stand around on a boat and dance. It's like a corporate mandated squid party. It is truly terrible and I want that hour of my life back. Chloe Noir is the next new character, and she's actually pretty cool. She uses an umbrella type weapon to fight. 100% original idea, do not steal. Bublo Espuma is pretty alright. He was the first character they advertised in the reveal trailer, but the last character to join. And from what I've seen from other people who have unlocked him, he seems like he's the best character in the game. And Ramsey is the final boss from the story mode who speaks in the anime voice. Did I do this? I didn't entirely finish the story mode though. Why not? Well, you see, Foam Stars has a co op PvE horde mode where you fight off 10 waves of uh, bubble beasties, which are animals that shoot soap. It's a pretty eye diversion, but all the maps are completely flat plain, so it's not very dynamic. It's a glorified DPS check. Only 1.1% of players have managed to clear the hard mode a single time. You can level up your abilities, so I think the game wants you to play the game on normal mode a bunch, grind up a bunch of experience, then go into hard mode with maxed out abilities, and you just have to hope you get paired with teammates who have also grinded this mode and maxed out their abilities. The coolest part is the roguelike elements, because between each wave you get to choose another temporary ability, which really makes you strategize on what best you need when. But every single time you do try the horde mode on hard and most likely lose, you have to watch this really really long unskippable cutscene that's pre-rendered in 4k resolution. It's the 
the best looking part of the game and the most annoying part of the game. Now, the single player is the horde mode, but it's just you, and there's no roguelike abilities between each wave. Instead, there's dialogue telling you each character's backstory. In Penny Gwyn's story, they use pictures of real-ass penguins. I'm not sure if that's cheap or funny. After each chapter, you unlock some human-drawn character art, and I really like the art. I initially cleared all three chapters with all six characters, but a few months later they added three more chapters for each character, with much less art this time. I know this mode is supposed to be more of a tutorial with each character's abilities, but oh my god, it's extremely boring. Man, this fucking boring ass game, I am bored out of my mind playing this. Each chapter is like 10 minutes of boredom. The dialogue should have been only during the rounds, not awkwardly stand there between the rounds. Listening to this game's interesting, derogatory. Voice acting. Only 0.4% of Foamstar's players have completely cleared the story mode, and I don't blame them. Foamstar's could be considered a hero shooter in the sense that each character comes with their own set of exclusive abilities. Hero shooters are kind of a dying genre because Overwatch was the king and then burnt their own throne down. But regardless, those types of games live and die by their roster. The character designs are of course subjective, and I'm still not sure how I feel about them. I think it's, I like the ideas behind each character. I like the character art, but I don't like the in-game models. By the time this video comes out, Foam Stars will be entirely free to play, so if you have a PS4 or PS5, you can play it for yourself and make your own opinion. You get diamond chips for playing to get character skins, and I'm sure you could buy more chips. I played a couple matches on free to play day, and the wait times for matches on that day were around 2 minutes each, so not terrible. There's a lot of new players marked with the baby duck eggs, so you know exactly who the easy prey are. Like one guy on my team playing as Rave Breaker, a long range character, and at the start of the match he ran straight towards the other team and died. I really had to clutch up and lead my team of newbies to victory, as the star player, of course. And it is truly free now. You don't even need a PlayStation Network Plus subscription or anything like that to play it online. Which places this game on the same tier as Genshin Impact. That's a bad thing. Why I stopped playing Foam Stars? Because I didn't fucking want to, alright? The gameplay was fine, I guess. The music was surprisingly really good, but there just was not a strong enough hook for me to play the game. Besides, I was playing other games. I mean, shit. I was playing Dragon's Dogma 2, then I was playing Splatoon 3 Side Order, then I was playing Unicorn Overlord, then I was playing Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, then I was playing the new Splatoon 3 season and had to grind out Splatoon's fuck-ass catalog, which I also hate because it's another battle pass. And that's the problem with battle passes, the problem with designing in FOMO and trying to optimize for engagement metrics or whatever. How many people are really gonna play more than one? If I'm already playing one battle pass that takes days, weeks, months to complete and then another game comes along with another battle pass, I'm not gonna think, oh great, I have two battle passes to grind now. No, I'm just not gonna play that other game. Games should feel like work, I already work. Just got home from a long shift, let me go clock in the foam stars so I can lock this Bublo Espuma palette swap. No! That is not a sentence uttered by human beings! This battle pass is ass! Unlocking stuff in the game for playing the game is cool, but there needs to be desire to play, desiree to play. As soon as it feels like you're trying to compel me to play, that's when I'm out. Did Foam Stars fail? What do you think? How did Foam Stars fail? I haven't found any officially released sales numbers or microtransaction revenue or profit margins for Foam Stars specifically, but Square Enix did say in their financial results brief that it underperformed and did not meet expectations. But they also say every game of theirs doesn't meet expectations. Maybe find a new guy in charge of setting expectations. However, there was a report that less than two months after the game launched, at least 95% of players had dropped off and stopped playing. So good luck trying to convince people to be a player in your online game that doesn't have any players. Did Foam Stars deserve success? Well, no one deserves success, right? But Foam Stars used generative AI, so no, it absolutely deserved to fail. Sorry for all the good stuff you put in this game, but you shouldn't have been a dipshit in the 11th hour. However, in the hypothetical universe where they weren't fucking dumbasses and that did not happen, should it have been more successful? Well, you know, I think back to Splatoon 1. When it launched in 2015 on the Wii U, 
a console which no one bought, and while it was fun, it was barely a game. There were five maps, half the modes weren't there, only had a third of the weapons, it was very unbalanced, and supported by Nintendo's very shitty online, all for $60! Fast forward nine years later to today, only three games to its name, and it's a massive global success. We really had a whole Splatoon trilogy between Pikmin 3 and Pikmin 4, that's crazy. And there have been other games with some of the most dog shit ass scam ass gameplay that somehow still managed to sell way too many copies. So hypothetically, without fundamentally changing what the game is, what could Foam Stars have done differently? And I'll preface all this by saying, it's easy for me, who's never released a video game, to Monday morning quarterback this process that takes time, skill, resources, budgeting, and pick out things with the omniscience of hindsight. However, most of these things they could have accounted for. I'm also in the United States, so maybe it was more successful in other regions? I don't know. 1. PC release. This game should not have been a PlayStation only release. And look, I ain't gonna pretend Pretend like I know dick from tits about porting games to different SKUs, alright? I'm sure it ain't as easy as dragging the EXE file from the PlayStation folder to the PC folder. You gotta connect between different types of machines. I don't understand the internet, or servers, or ping. But on the other hand, this is not a big game. It's dudes, maps, and soap. How hard could it have been? Even a game like Helldivers 2, which is another Sony affiliated game, was also a PC release, and it did quite well. Don't a lot of people prefer to play shooters? on a mouse and keyboard, not console controller. 2. Release at a different time. Again, Foam Star is released on February 6, 2024. Doesn't this feel like more of a summer game? Not February, which is a cold month for most of the world? Now, most games release dates are determined months in advance, so this one was just kind of unlucky. Most years, there aren't a ton of games that come out in January or February, but maybe companies realize this, so a lot of 2024 games released in January and February. Yakuza, Lock of Dragon 8, Tekken 8, Persona 3 Remake, Dragon's Dogma 2, Helldivers 2, literally two days after Foam Stars, Unicorn Overlord, the Suicide Squad game that everyone hated, god dang pal world. These games are either online games that take up your time, or huge RPGs that will take up your time. Plus they're mostly known quantities, be it sequels, or licensed games, or funny ripoff cash grabs. Good luck with that lawsuit, cause y'all guilty as hell. Foam Stars can't really do much about other companies' games, but it does beg the question, why did this Square Enix game Foam Stars come out three weeks before the Square Enix game Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I mean, the answer is to help juice profits before the end of their fiscal year in March. But I remember like a week after Foam Stars came out, Sony was like, we ain't got no more games coming out for a while. Maybe wait to release Foam Stars then until it had a clearly open window? These next ones are a thing that Splatoon also did. Three, collabs. When Splatoon 1 came out, they put that shit on everything. They put Splatoon in Animal Crossing. They put Splatoon in Mario Maker. They put Splatoon in Art Academy. They put Splatoon in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Two of the only new characters were six different inklings. Even fan favorite Mario Kart characters from Mario games like Birdo, Diddy Kong, Funky Kong, the Time Trial Legend had to wait nine years behind inklings in Mario Kart. They put Splatoon Mii costumes in Smash Bros. the day Splatoon 1 came out. They even announced the next Smash Bros. game using Splatoon. There was no Splatoon in Smash Bros. before that. You see, when you got a new thing going on, you just gotta keep pushing it like a drug pusher. So considering Foam Stars came out the same month is Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 2 of 3, why not have some type of crossover there? Like a save data bonus. If you have Foam Stars save data, then you get a special outfit for some of the characters, or a special gun for Barrett that shoots soap bubbles, I don't know. Some people may be thinking, <laughs> can't possibly tarnish the image, the legacy of Final Fantasy with an advert for another game. Final Fantasy XIV has tons of crossovers, like Rathalos from Monster Hunter as a mount. And did y'all forget how Final Fantasy XV was replete with ads for fucking cup noodle? Then if you take something already delicious like cup noodles and add in the finest, freshest ingredients, what do you get? The ultimate flavor experience. Splatoon has had other properties collab into its game as well, with the Squid Girl anime, Spongebob, Transformers, Ninja Turtles, multiple Japanese magazines, 7-Eleven, Nike! Obviously many people want to work with Nintendo, but for Square Enix's Foam Stars, I again look to Final Fantasy. Agito and Tonics are built for Cloud Soldier outfit. Stowe's outfit? That's almost Tifa. Why were these not costumes in Foam Stars? Jet Justice and Barrett have similar enough builds, Kate Sith is like the same proportions as Ramsey. Come on y'all, this is easy. 4. Foam Stars Direct. Every single 
single Splatoon game released like a 20 minute video being like, here's what the game is, here's why you should be excited to play this. They should have done the same thing for Foam Stars. They must have known, right, that people will think this game is a Splatoon clone. There's no way that they were making this game for years, chomping away at the computer for years, thinking, this will be our brand new, unique, liquid shooting game. What the fuck is that? They should have released a big video highlighting each character, showcasing each game mode, and clearly explain this is what makes our game unique. 5. Additional promos and trailers While Foam Stars has made additional trailers, you'd have to seek them out to know. All three Splatoon games would often have their update trailers appear inside of general Nintendo Directs, which shows non-Splatoon players, hey, check out all this cool stuff going on in this game that's already out. Every couple of months, Sony has their state of play, which is like a Nintendo Direct but a thousand times more boring. Oh my god, I don't think I've ever made it through one of these without falling asleep and having to rewind. Anyway, since February 2024, there have been two Sony Directs and zero Foam Stars trailers in those Directs, so not sure what the deal is there. They even had a Sony Direct two weeks before Foam Stars went free to play, which would have been a great place to spend 15 to 30 seconds to mention that. 6. Work with online content creators To be fair, they sort of did. There was a launch day stream that they did not invite me to, possibly because it was in Britain. <laughs> And there was a Foam Stars tournament for actual money. All official Splatoon tournaments either gave you a fancy controller or a copy of the game Arms. The Foam Stars tournament was won by a team of Splatoon players, which is expected and also really funny. And full disclosure, they did actually email me in mid-March being like, hey, do you want a code for our premium battle pass? Which is like $6, but I was like, yeah, sure, send it over. By the way, I'm actually about to make another video on Foam Stars. And they never sent it over, and then I finished the video, and they're definitely not sending over now. 7. Don't use AI, you fucking idiots. Or at least replace it after all the backlash. Some people who were planning on at least trying the game out refused to after hearing about it. But at least you can still play Foam Stars, so still better than Concord. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, then you may also enjoy my recent video on Splatoon 3 two years later. Comment below if you plan on checking out Foam Stars and today's comment code word is washed. Comment washed if you made it all the way through the video and uh, that's it, video's over.